This is a demo showcasing the TFM edge peeling smart material. Um, also could just be a mask. Um, but yeah, so let's get going. So I'm going to drag in the material from the smart material library. Doing that, you just throw it into the, the document smart material thing. Uh, yeah. Um, so basically how the material works is um, it's based off a of metal edge generator. So a little backstory is I was I was getting sick of um the metal edge peel thing uh, generator because it felt too traditional and it felt too um, generic. It just covered everything. If you look right here, um, if you were to look, it's like it just covers the whole thing, and it's kind of annoying how we how we can't really tweak. There's not really a good parameter to where you can kind of, you know, tweak a couple of things and it'd be done, you know. Um, and also, I've been experimenting with a lot of wood. So having, like, this wasn't really doing it because I like to do a little height detail. And this just is way too generalized. And there's really no direction in terms of, um, you know, it's not unique enough. And it's kind of hard to find the balance between procedural and uniqueness because, uh, you know, procedural can only take you so far. So I kind of want to push that boundary to see how like far I could take it and also have it be 100% procedural. So then came this idea. So basically, TFM edge peel, uh, smart material. So basically, what we have right here is the sculpted edge generator and then an underlining material and a material input. So we can, um, I'll leave these on for now. So if you were, if we were to open up the, the, uh, the source height. So this is where everything's spawning. Uh, this is where everything's generating. Uh, I try to keep it super organized. So everything is, um, very user friendly in terms of like, what's this do? How does this affect that? Um, so as you see right here, this is a 100% procedural. So we're getting some really nice uh, curling along where the paint is chipping or like just edge wear in general. Um, and here you can say if you don't like the ovalness, you can put like you can turn the warp up and you can get some like details like this or you can turn the cell four on. You can get some like peeling detail and you can just knock that back. Um, but it's not to go too deep in it. But we're, we'll start. We'll start from scratch. So basically, the metal edge wear. We can hide these for now. So the metal edge wear. Um, all this is just a metal edge wear. You can tweak everything inside. Anything that's green, you can somewhat tweak. Or everything that or this is green, you can tweak this. Anything, just don't touch any of the anchors. That's probably the biggest thing. Do not touch any anchors in this. Uh, in the smart material, I'll probably make a note of that somewhere, like right here when I post it for sale. It's just gonna be free. Um, that don't touch any of the anchors because it was not fun setting that up. Um, yeah, so basically, now if we were to sort this through, so all it is just metal edge, edge wear, and then it's, it's a blur. So now we're spreading out all those edge damages that we were seeing earlier, and um. Yeah, so we're spreading that out and we're using a histogram to pull it all back together, but it's gener it's like averaging all those pixels and, you know, everything that that's, uh, was created by the edge where is now, and then the blur, it's now bringing back that back together to create like some sort of a silhouette of like sculpted detail. Um, this is where you could stop here depending on like what you want. Um, like you can, you can mess with the wear level and the maybe turn down grunge. I'm just gonna turn up the height on this a little bit more, just so it's noticeable. I don't recommend sw uh, switching up the height. This that's something you can tweak up here at the overall height level. Um, but like, say if you just want to scratch all this, you just need this layer. You can just delete. You can just delete everything here. It doesn't really matter. Um, but so say if you like want some sort of random edge detailing right here, and uh, turn up the grunge so it's a little bit more randomized. And then um, the blur, you can either in increase it a lot, and as you can imagine, it makes everything a little bit more 
smoother. It gets you some of that more of that macro detail. Um, and then the histogram, you can also tweak the histogram to where it's a little bit. It makes those like edges a lot sharper, as you're seeing right here. One thing I do want to point out is that it is not good with seams. So the reason why we're not seeing that here is because it's a um, come on, show it. Yeah, it's a bevel. It's a they're connected through a bevel. So that's one thing I do want to point out is that it is not good with seams because you're dealing with height detail. Um, but yeah, so you can kind of go in here. These are like the primary uh, three that you want to focus on because it basically the whole graph is set up to where whatever it's based on these, uh, it translates to everything. So yeah, let's just find something real quick that could work because uh, regardless, we're gonna have to. We're, we can change at the end when everything's done, so it doesn't really matter. Um, like if you want like longer damages, you can turn up the blur um, a lot, or you can just keep it. Again, it's all procedural. It's a good way to avoid sculpting a lot of this, these details too because uh, otherwise you'd have to go in and sculpt all this damages and yeah, a lot easier to do it in real time, especially uh, like wood stuff. Also like, uh, there, yeah, again there's this warping so it creates like this nice detail here and also it breaks it up a little bit. It doesn't, you see how it's so soft right here but once you turn to warping it's a little bit more jagged. So you, you bring back that macro, that micro detail that we were losing. Uh, when we did the blur, um, I'm just gonna turn that off because I don't really, really matter. So this is good. Uh, this the the peeling effect, the peeling effect. Uh, it's all right. It it's more for the breakup of this. Like right here, it creates some pretty interesting breakup right here. Um, like if you were like just lower the opacity on the multiply, you get some nice chunking effect. And also, you can just turn turn off warp and whatnot and you can get some interesting shapes just another layer of procedural if you want or you can you know change it doesn't really matter uh, again don't ever touch these uh, anchors um, paint out bad details is probably a big a big one since we're since that blur thing is spacing all these details out when it when the histogram comes in and brings them back together sometimes you get like weird um, shapes that come up like I, yeah I usually get some like just like every once in a while you get like a couple like and open surfaces. You could just put an AO on top of everything to multiply. Like if you're gonna build off this, make sure anything, any filter is built is below this sculpted generator source because this is this anchor is what's sent to everything else. So uh yeah, you can just go in and since it's a multiply, you can use your brush and you can either wipe it out or you can bring it back. It doesn't really matter. Um Again, it's all what you want. Just know that if you do change, like, you know, whatever this, um, then uh, this detail is still going to be, you know, there because you painted it out. Um, so now we have that. So that's, this is all tweakable. This is basically what sets up everything above it. So now if you come up here, now I was experimenting with a high, uh, a high pass. And the thing about high passes is, is that, um, it boosts up the general uh, the mask color so I was getting like grays in this and it was really hard to mask that out because once you want to add a material you couldn't add a material because it was all grayed and you couldn't bring it back to its original level so I did I did, this was a workaround because like the high pass wasn't working because um, uh, if you put a high pass like right right uh, here you get this. You get this really cool warping effect on the edges. Um, turn off warp. Turn off warp. Um, so you're getting this uh, this pretty cool edging effect, where it's almost like where the paint peels and then it, like it like curls up. So I like that detail, but I didn't like how um, it's also it's a lot harsher. I don't know why it's harsher. Maybe my histogram scans a little bit high. Um, but regardless, it, it was it was it was making really cool detail. But if you look at the mask now, um, the high pass it kind of, it, it messes everything up. And uh, yeah, I just didn't like it. So I need a better workaround because uh, I it would be cool if we can like 
customize the the curling effect uh, alone. So let me just go back to whatever we were at. Okay, so we have that. So now, uh, so since we don't have that curling effect uh, with the high pass, or we can't use we can't use a high pass because the anchor for that, um, for the material underlying, would be fucked. So now I'm going to up here where it says slope sl sloping along damage. So it's basically what it does is it takes uh, the import of this of the sculpted generator source. It imports it as an anchor. Uh, under a fill layer, it blurs it and it inverts it. So basically, um, it takes, it does exactly what it sounds like it does. Maybe uh, I'll. Uh... <gasps> Actually, I'll, I'll just go in phases still. So with this is, uh, I I recommend only tweaking the blur and the level. Uh, you can tweak the height. Um, this increases like the sloping effect a little bit more harsher. Um, yeah, again, all what, you, all what you desire, and again, you can sculpt this detail in, of course, if you want, and you can still, it's all procedural, so it, whatever you're doing in real time, it affects everything else, even, like, the underlying material that we're going to put on at the end, so, yeah, kind of go in and tweak everything, a lot, obviously, some of these details would never spawn here, because, uh, the edges are uh, concave so um, yeah so basically tweak the levels in the blur never tweak the anchors um, yeah so you know more appealing you'll love this layer if you want you can just turn it off it doesn't really matter um, yeah but I, I like this like edge peeling a little bit uh, so yeah so that's that um, and now we have the part two merging layers. Basically, this merges this layer, the sculpted edge generator, and the sloping along damage. It, it, it grabs these two, and it. Um, I can't explain it now, but when at the time it was it was a painful process to. But it was basically just merging two graphs together, so they're overlaying the damage. So the slope is. So the slope is under. So the slow, it, so it basically prevents it from the the sloping, from going into the underlying damage. So it, like this way, it cuts off right here. It doesn't continue because if you if you were to disable the sculpt one of these, it, it just like goes everywhere. Yeah. So but yeah, as you can see here, it's uh, it blurs that it blurs this generator. So we have to. We have to have this layer so we can cut out that detail back in there so it's not overlaying. So, all right, we have that back. Um, so now if we have, now we have the overall height level and merge. So basically we took the merge and we combined it into one and then we brought it into here. Uh, there was a there was a reason why I had to make it its own layer because if you tweak the levels on this, it messed with the levels on I think something else. So this is a workaround for that. So this is its own layer. I prefer it actually. I'm um, looking looking at it now. Um, yeah. So now this isn't. You don't really tweak this much. It's it's basically I consider this the intensity. Uh, you can tweak a lot. Um, yeah, like the bottom, I don't think you want to touch the black one yet, because the black one does that. So, you can kind of tweak the overall intensity, this middle guy, um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory, um, maybe we can decrease. Okay, so now that we have, that's all done. Um, that's the sculpted source height. So 
now these these the underlying material is taking this gener uh this anchor that's right here the sculpt edge generator export uh, this is an anchor for everything. So if you want to make a material based off uh, uh, something around this generator, you use this anchor, uh, sculpted as generator export. So now we have an underlying material, as you can see. And then we have a um, over overlaying material. And they both coincide with each other. The height damage is a little intense on this. So I'm actually gonna go in and uh lighten it up a little bit. Wow this is harsh on the eyes. <laughs> um so yeah, so that's that. Um, and just to just kind of give you an idea of just to customize, once you get everything set, so you know, say you send something off to the client and it's like, hey, okay, we, we need more, we need more micro detail. Uh, the mac micro, the macro detail is too much. So you just come down here, go to Metal Edgeware, tweak the, uh, just tweak anything. So like, say if you want that, or let me turn it off from red. Say we want to bring back that. Uh... Oh yeah, this black one is based off the mask, so try not to touch this guy because um yeah, pretty self-explanatory. I'm also I re I just like made this so I'm still kind of new to it, um, but the pipeline's there. It just needs to be uh fleshed out a little bit more, but um, it's still enough to give you guys an idea of like how it works and whatnot. Um, trying to figure out how I could decrease the overall height. Yeah, I thought it was in the histogram. I think the histogram actually controls the color. Oh yeah, wrong one. Um, yeah, I can't tweak, can't tweak that. Yeah, something like this feels a little bit better. Um, so yeah, so basically just give you an idea. I'll kind of go through like some different shapes we can, and uh, we can wrap this up. So yeah, and if you notice that some of your details are like peaking right here, they're not like going through the color. Let's go down to the levels height. Or is it this? No, it was the levels. Just tweaking that bottom, that uh, the bottom uh, minimum value, so it reaches uh, those lower values that we're getting out of this mask. Um, again, tweak the blur. The more the blur, the smoother the shapes. Um, And you can create some pretty cool uh, peeling effects right here um, with that. And this is not this is not using anything crazy. Like there's no additional channels that you get to import. This is all based on anchors and uh, yeah. And it's all customizable too. Like say if um you wanted to add like I don't know an additional like say if you want we're kind of going to go off the grid a little bit but say if you want to do like a mg dirt uh generator and um you want to invert it because you want to make like some sort of like rusting material like something like this and then you can tweak the peeling 
You can make it like a like a cells three or something. Like you can really do a lot of shit to this uh to this uh material. And it's all procedural, which is which is awesome. Uh, and that was the biggest thing for me because uh for not in the past um it, it was just um uh, it was just these three, and I wanted to get some sort of peeling getting at the edges, so that's what stemmed this whole idea of, like, okay, like, let's just go all out, and, uh, yeah. So, that's basically how this generator works, um, or, not generator, it's more of a mask, uh, or smart mask for edge peeling stuff, but, um, yeah, if you like it, uh, buy it, or download it on Gumroad, it's free. Um, and if you have any questions, at me on Twitter, uh, at Troco, uh, T-R-O-W-C-O. Um, but otherwise, yeah, it's a pretty self-explanatory, um, mask. And, uh, hopefully I see some cool designs with it because, uh, we can't be sculpting all the time. So this is definitely a big shortcut. So yeah, have a good day. Goodbye.